Hello, hello. Welcome to episode 97 of the Lorther. I had to take a moment to remember how far we are. So we are now here on the West Capitol Rampart, and we are getting close to the Volcano Manor request to slay Vargram, right? And it's somewhere in this building, which is very different architectural style from the rest of Langdell. In fact, it looks like the Sword and Tree uh, the Sword Saint Stratum of architecture like we've seen at Stormvale, Castle Morn, and uh, Redmain Castle. It's kind of interesting that we're seeing three clashing uh, architectural styles, those of Celia, which I did a little more digging and looking through my notes, and I can't I can't go on the Eternal City Celia rant until we get underground, so that will have to wait. I was right to not talk about it. I didn't have the information or the things yet, so or the clues yet. So I apologize for wanting to do that so badly and convoluting a lot of last episode. But we will be able to talk about this today. Hopefully I won't take too long to do it. But we have a gargoyle to slay. It's kind of resting like the uh, black gargoyle was outside uh, Garank's place. Oh, I need to get Garank those death fruit. Oh god, I've been putting that off. But down here we can find the cane sword. It is a funny little sword. Beloved sword of an aged knight whose last quest was long behind him repurposed into a walking stick. The tip is rather worn. Though bent of black and without brawn required to even raise the sword aloft, he still wished to meet his end with weapon in hand. It's not very good. It's deck scaling. It's lightweight for a sword, though. For a straight sword. So if you're absolutely sprung for weight, which... You really can't wield a straight sword. I don't think these guys are very weak to strike damage. Oh, he can just keep going. That spinning attack combo. And here, there's the main promenade of uh, Lane Dell. And we can open the gate that was below us. I think I'm going to buff up to bop this guy. I hope I can do it just right. I'm bad at fight fighting gargoyles, personally. Can I get to his head? It will let me get to his head. Oh, that wasn't so bad. Did he kill some of these guys? He did. That's the sound I heard. And we get his halberd, which has more of that corpse wax on it. We'll show off the weapons we just found. So here's the, uh, the cane sword. Very silly. I kind of want to use it on something just to use it, but it's not very good. Kind of short. Kind of dull. <laughs> silly. And then here is the Golem Halberd. I think we've already gotten the Black Blade variant of this. I could be mistaken. And it's got Corpse Wax on it there. Uh, bronze Halberd wielded by Valiant Gargoyles. Just like the wielder, the missing parts have been mended with Corpse Wax, a patchwork of champions. And here we find another Golden Seed. And though I didn't say it last time, we actually found enough Golden Seeds last time to be able to get uh, our 14th Flask. So there we go. Okay, I think we are going to the Fortified Manor first. Which is understandable. Oh, I think I need to go up the route to go down it. Well, maybe not necessarily. Actually, there might be a thing to jump down to. That'll be more worthwhile. Possibly not. I think I'm going to be silly, though. And wield... Do I not have it on this character? I suppose I don't. Well, oh, there's a page here. <laughs> uh, boy. All right, this is what I was talking about. Spinning stone six. Uh, yeah, we'll do the lower part and then the upper part. So that gate is open now. 
And there's two Lanedale Knights over here. I have not yet noticed us. Well, that one has. Buddy. Come fight me. I have your shield. It'll be funny. And we get the gravel stone seal, which we will look at in just a moment. I don't know if this is the way you're supposed to get up here, but this is the way I'm choosing to get up here. There we go. Uh, things to grab. Gravel stone. There's gravel stone since we are all around the foot of Fortisax. Grand Sax. Grand Sax. Fortisax is somebody we don't know about. Shut up. I didn't say that. More gravel stones. Around his horrid feet. For some reason they've placed torches all over the place. We will look at the gravel stone seal. Sacred seal made from... A Gravel stone, thought to be an ancient dragon scale. Enhances dragon cult incantations of the royal capital. Dragon cult incantations being of the lightning variety. The worship of the ancient dragons does not conflict with belief in the Erd Tree. After all, this seal and lightning itself are both imbued with gold. So, interesting parallel that even though the dragons were once at odds with Landell, when Landell eventually defeated the dragons, that they were also absorbed into their grafted, multifaceted belief system. <laughs> Here's a jump I absolutely despise. <gasps> I did it first try. Unlike the jump to get the Bolt of Grand Sex early, by the way. That jump I showed for the Bolt of Grand Sex, that's not the normal way to get it. I will show off the normal way to get it, but that was not it. What to show off? Quite a bit I could show off. I feel like being claimers. So we show up here, and this is familiar. This is weird, right? Something's wrong here. This is the area where we fought Albrecht, or whatever his name is. The stairs are out, though. Something's wrong here. We are in a version of the round table hold complete with these golden Erd tree banners. The chest is missing, but instead we find black key bolts. Like, I think we found in the chest before, actually, or something similar. There's commoners here. In the kitchens. Glass shard. But something is severely wrong here. Two Fingers Prayer Book. Take a look at that. Prayer Book containing Incantation of the Two Fingers, an item once entrusted to Tarnished Worthy of Lordship, can be uh, given to a learned cleric to gain access to the following incantations, Lord's Heal and Lord's Aid. So, a double healing prayer book. We do have the sign on the ground, Dory. I'm not missing it. And we can push this open. Weirdly enough, we'll visit that in just a moment, actually. Over here, we have Albrecht set. His pointed hat, robe, bracers, and trousers. So we can read his item descriptions. Mad Tongue Albrecht's pointed hat, a sign of heretical of a heretical practitioner, set with red glintstone, said to be former formed by the blood of sacrifices, strengthens thorn sorcery. Albrecht was an aloof yet disturbed heretical sorcerer, said to have been driven mad by jeering tongues during his service to the Round Table Hold long ago. And they say much the same thing. I believe the parts of the set that have red gems in it actually buff thorn sorcery. So the bracers and the hat, I believe. How much they buff it by? Probably not much. It's probably like 2%, so don't get too excited. Here we have 
the flightless bird painting. And this sight of grace. Um, we're gonna go check out where that painting is, actually. This episode's gonna be all over the place. A lot of these episodes are gonna be all over the place as I get close to talking about lore items, but don't necessarily have them. Um, here it is. No, that's not it. There it is. All right. Work of a wandering artist. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is the same as all the other ones, isn't it? Unfortunately. Do we not get the champion song one either? Shucks. All right, we have a two-pronged field trip to go on. We will go fast. I don't think we got that one. Did we? I guess the easy way to check is to check my inventory. <laughs> so chest, bows, it will be near the bottom. I think. No, we don't have it. Okay. Of course we don't have it. Why would we have it? Why do we have anything? I have more theories about the, uh, <laughs> about the, uh, various dungeons that speckle the lands between. Maybe I'll rant a little bit about that while I'm going to and from. Uh, they're often full, full of, uh, ghost flame, for some reason, and depictions of skeletons. And I always thought they were made by the Earth Tree culture to get, or by a previous culture to get to the Great Tree, as they are full of imps. Right? But we see in some dungeons that there are uh, depictions of Rosas who guides people to the foot of the earth tree, or to the roots of the earth tree, rather. And he's used to dispel the shadows that exist in many of these parts of the dungeons, right? Kind of insisting that there's some sort of conflict of interest within those dungeons. So the new thought that comes to my mind is that they were originally by a culture that worshipped the death birds. Since we see a uh, burial uh, kiln sort of structures throughout those areas. There's sarcophagi, but a lot of urns that would be full of ash. And so it seems that uh, they weren't necessarily buried there, but rather were brought there to be burned into ghost flame. The uh, Death's Poker that we get from one of the Death Bird bosses way earlier in the game, way back in Kaelid. Uh, it seems like it would be the ideal tool for pulling the skeleton out of a kiln after you've uh, tried to cremate it. If you're cremating with Standard Fire or Ghost Flame, chances are they're not going to be as strong as our modern day crematoriums. And so you wouldn't get total ash like we like to put in our urns today. But rather you would get like the Romans had with their uh, funeral pyres and instead would just burn most of the flesh off of it. And the sinews and everything else and the hard bits of bone that would be left over. You'd want to pull out not with a shovel for the ash but rather with a, a hooked stoker. So... That's kind of a thing that happens. And so it makes me think that the ancient culture that existed before uh, made all these catacombs for the act of cremation. And that's why they're filled with ghost flames and depictions of skeletons. Because they believed in death in that capacity. Um, I have a shield. Twin bird kite shield. Uh, shield featuring a vividly painted twin bird. The twin bird is said to be the envoy of an outer god and mother of the death birds. So they did have a religion, right? At dwindling levels of HP, this shield slightly boosts both attack and defense. And I don't believe I have kept on me the death poker. No, I've not. So, we won't worry about that. But that's a, a theory that I have that uh, all the heroes' graves and all those different graves were actually constructed by the culture that worshipped the death birds. And the fact that the roots of the great tree, when it came to prominence, grew into the big central rooms in each one of those uh, dungeons is merely coincidence. And when the Erd Tree faith eventually took hold away later, they decided to use that place for Erd Tree burial because it was an easy, already established way to access all of those uh, root systems across the lands between. So we came here to the painting location that we found in the Shaded Castle, and here we find the Harp Bow, which is a bow you only wield if you really, really didn't put any points into strength or dex. Like, if you're, like, the prophet or the astrologer starting class and you really need a short bow. Bow fashioned from a minstrel's harp, uh, sonorous tones still resound when firing arrows. Troubadours sing tales of champions, both in the honorable service of the tree and the one who spurns honor for blasphemy. 
And sure enough, if we put arrows on this sucker and give it a shot. It sounds like a poorly plucked harp. Which is so darn silly that they thought this would be a good idea, but I digress. Okay, and now oh, I even put a marker there. So we go back to Dominula, Windmill Village, briefly. And we go to the far end of Dominula at the top of this little cliff where this building is. There's a couple dancing ladies. I think they will ignore us because they are so tied up with their dancing. Yep. We can loot the golden firefly. And over here on the cliff is another one of these painting boys envisioning his picture with his outstretched hands. And here we get Fire's Deadly Sin, which has an infamous past. It's not so bad. Incantation originating from a deeply ominous prophecy. Sets both the caster and the surrounding area ablaze with raging flames. The caster's body will remain engulfed in flames for a while, burning them and any who draw near. Charging enhances potency. The prophet despaired, looking up at the Erd Tree. For soon, the kindling would burst into flame, bringing ruin. The burning of the Erd Tree is the first cardinal sin that is not the domain of mere men. So it seems it has happened once before. And thus, flame pyromancies were outlawed until the time of the shattering, it seems, when perfumers were conscripted in service. And they needed their uh, spark aromatics for the war effort. So, neat little tie in there. All right. Let's get to it. So now... So we see pedestals like we're used to seeing on, uh, seeing, uh, sword monks on. But they've put these Erd Tree symbols on, right? And we also see weaponry consistent with, uh, Banished Knights, I believe. Is it not? Uh, maybe it's upstairs. I'm getting confused. But there's still all these depictions of the lion. We saw a huge lion crest outside. We have paintings of Godfrey, Radigan. Probably Queen Merica and the Erd Tree up there. Here's more Sword Saint statues. Oh, here's the uh, Banished Knights like we saw earlier in Landell. Though I have a feeling that these particular ones aren't as golden. Yeah, the other ones were really gold. These ones are not as deep a gold, it looks like. Still Sword Saints statues. Um... Let's see, the Banished Knights seem to be the original Crusaders for the Erd Tree or possibly the Dragon Cult, right? At some point, they seem to have lost their homes, much like the historical Crusader states. The Banished Knights' sigils can be found on red banners in the Fortified Manor. Where do we see that sigil? Aha! Is that what those are? Yeah, that must be the sign of the Erd Tree because it looks like the little dragon that they even have on their hats. There it is. Okay. Thank you, notes of the past, helping me string together cohesive thoughts. Uh, one crusading order, the Order of the Dragon, a real world aristocratic order. Uh, their sword ceremonial swords share the same pattern as the Banished Knight swords. Oh, do I still have a Banished Knight sword on me? I do not. I failed. I'll have to pull one out. Uh, but you could look that up. You could probably look up the, uh, the Order of the Dragon sword and then you can compare it to the banished sword i will pull up banished sword in a moment but we're going to do this fight with uh bernal against vargram and whoever vargram has brought with him so we have errant sorcerer wilhelm wearing our starting outfit weirdly enough and there we have vargram the raging wolf
Aaron Sorcerer Wilhelm's dealt with. It looks like uh, Bernal's doing just fine against Vargrim. And Vargrim's wearing the poster boy outfit, but he's got the, uh... He had his own version of the God Slayer Greatsword, which is really odd, because we have that. Was there more than one? Or is he from his own continuity and the flow of time is convoluted? But here we have the Raging Wolf set now. So let's take a look at that. I really like this set. I like the poster boy of this game. Though I still think I like the standard knight outfit from Dark Souls 3, the one that you could start with the most of any knight outfit in any Souls game, basic as that is. Helm worn by Vargram the Raging Wolf, one of the first tarnished to visit the Round Table Hold. Vargram's nickname comes from the White Wolf's mane that decorates his helm. Uh, according to old legends, wolves are the shadows of the Empyrean, and this is what Vargram aspired to be. Shadows of the Empyrean. We haven't learned about that just yet, unfortunately. So we'll have to, I'll try to remember that for when that verbiage comes up again. Okay. Oh, we have so many pieces. We're, we're back to that point where we have pieces and they're not fitting together again. We will get there. We will get there. It'll happen soon enough. Come on, give me stamina. There we go. So for some reason, there are abductor virgins here in this outer portion of the place. We have more saint statues. Oh, this is a mistake. A mistake part two. Oh, I'm just getting greedy trying to finish off its boys, but it's just not happening. I just couldn't wait to kill that thing, could I? Fought it very poorly. But we see more of these sword and saint... Sword Saint uh, statues underneath this wing of Grand Sax. We find the Stormhawk Axe, which is an axe we've seen Nefeli Lu wield. Battle axe designed to resemble a hawk, with its wings comprising the blade. Signature weapon of warriors who strive to remain one with the storm. Despite being so far from their place of birth, their hearts are proud and thereby easily undone. It has the Thunderstorm unique skill. Imbue the armament's wing blade with lightning and swing it around to create a tempestuous lightning storm. Follow up with an additional input to perform two swing attacks. The lightning will stay on the blade for a while. So sure enough, this is her weapon. And this is an awful lot like Stormcaller, but lightning flavored instead of wind flavored. And it can hit a total of six times. And it's two, it's three sets of two. And unlike Stormcaller, it's very good holding people in place which makes it a very good weapon to swap to very quickly to surprise people in PvP, especially if you have multiple bearing down on you that are being very aggressive. I will upgrade that weapon and start using it. So, that is one I like a lot. That and the, uh... I guess I don't have it on this character. Oh, I do! The Nox Flowing Hammer. I think both of those are excellent swaps for just their Ashes of War, honestly. And sure enough, going up here is the Divine Bridge. So had you not taken the Divine Tower way back when, or the Tower of Return all the way up the Southern Weeping Peninsula, you could come here and get yourself that artifact. The Blessed Dew Talisman. The one that I abuse a lot to keep my health going because I chat way too much. Oh boy, do I chat way too much. Let's get to it. We don't have a whole lot of time, and I don't think we'll get to the boss, but I'll, I'll do my darn diddly best. All right, we need to go to the second floor now of this fortified manor and find out what the heck's going on up there. So coming around the side of the building... We have dogs. 
who I do not care to deal with. I care enough, I suppose. I took the time to kill him. Another golden rune. Lots of tasty money. Up here we are in a room I don't think we've been in before. Here we have more of these uh, Banished Knight outfits. This one looks corroded, honestly. Eh, maybe it was like the ones downstairs. There's just the low lighting. The low orangey lighting. But more stuff signifying... Oh, here's where Hewig works on his weapon. <laughs> One of those gladiator axes. We'll look at those a little later. And even a warped axe. Some long swords. Highland axe. Banished knight sword. Oh, I, I meant to look at a banished knight sword. We can look at this one. Yeah, it's got a... This is a low poly version of it, though, it looks like. We can grab what's here on the stairs, as long as we're careful. We find a level 6 smith in stone. We find the sanctified wet blade. Which is very nice. So now we have access to lightning and holy affinity. Sanctified wet blade with a cipher engraved can be used as a whetstone knife. When applying an affinity using a physical or golden type ash of war, an additional affinity of sacred or lightning can be chosen. We find Hewick's hammer. Hammer comprised of a large stone affixed to a metal handle, originally a blacksmith's tool. The art of smithing is said to have originated among the giants. This weapon's striking attacks boast ample weight behind them. So, it says that the smithing originated among the giants. Interesting. Here's Fia's bedchamber. She's not here, but this seems to be not the round table hold by my sword. That's a bow I like using. When I'm playing on my, uh... Grumpy Town Guard cosplay in PvP. Where is it? Here it is. And you kind of do a salute with your weapon. It's silly. I like it. And here we find a hero's room. Interesting coming through this place when it feels wrong. Here's the table of lost grace. There's all the weapons. And the crucible prophets. There's a rune arc. But nobody's here. More smithing stone. Lots of items, so it's worth looking through for a calling remedy. Gideon's work table, or his study. Twin maiden husks are not here. Here's where the uh, dung eater normally is. The bodies are the same, though. That's the creepy part. And there's another one of these seedbed curses. So I think we have three so far. And we don't know what their purpose is just yet. Okay. Let's open up the back here. Because we can push it open this time. This is where the two fingers reside in our round table hold that we're familiar with. But instead... We have a throne. The Elden Throne. Like the one that we saw in Stormvale. Behind Godric. Has those trees again with the people. I feel like they're the most defined here. There's that weird structure at the top like we've seen at the banner. What is that structure at the top of the tree? And we have these great tree reliefs. Erd Tree Banner, Great Tree Reliefs, Sarosh signs, uh, symbols of the hawk too, like Stormvale. Really is a linking of cultures here, isn't there? Sarosh, Counselor of the Golden Lineage, I mean. What is the point of this fortified manor? Something seems odd here. Um, let me loot this item, and then I think we have a couple things to look at. Oh, Coded Sword. We'll take a look at that. So this is like the Cypher Pata, but as a straight sword. Hidden Sword once granted to the Tarnished of the Round Table... By the two fingers, a formless cipher comprises its blade, which deals holy damage no shield can repel. Champions would gather at the round table hold in days long past. When the two fingers were masters of oration, their flesh yet full of vigor. Very fascinating. Okay. Oh boy, I kind of want to make these episodes long. I don't know if episode 100 will be the recap episode. I would love to make it the recap episode, but I'm just thinking about the pacing. I don't think it's going to happen, unfortunately. Oh, boy. 
because this is episode what 97 <laughs> and uh that would mean i have one episode to somehow get to everything and honestly i would like to complete ronnie's quest line and fia's quest line and an area underneath this zone and an area underneath that so <laughs> that's a lot of content uh okay um Thinks I need to sit at a grace to look at an item. This episode might go a smidge long. I think I want to finish the gist of Langdell. So this episode might go a little long, but I won't go nuts, hopefully. Alright, so let me find a shield. Here is the manor tower shield. And sure enough, the manor looks like the front. Of the place, right? It looks like the front of the fortified manor. This is a connection that I think is worth drawing. And we find the manor tower shield all the way back in Stormvale, which is a building of very similar construction. So hopefully I can look over here without uh, attracting being the ire of... Okay. I don't want to attract the ire of those Langdale Knights. So, looking at the front of this place, there's the uh, lion, there's the the wall, the windows. And sure enough, it looks like this, right? Simplified, but it looks... It's kind of hard to discount that, right? So, we learn from the Manor Tower Shield. An iron great shield large enough to cover up the entire body depicts the Round Table Hold gathering place of champions. So, this fortified manor is the Round Table Hold. Sort of. Great shields boast high damage negation. That's not important. Okay. So the manor tower shield, as one might guess, depicts the fortified manor or the exterior of the round table hole. From the door of the fortified manor, or sorry, the front door of the fortified manor is a wooden door. Right? Uh, and it's a carving of a tree in the front door specifically. So let me use up all my glowstones. So yeah, we have the, the great tree, right? It's that narrow tree relief. So pre ur tree, right? Uh, above it, carved into the lintel, shows a scene of women carrying jugs, not unlike the jug Merica uses to bestow blessings, like we saw with those uh, brass basins throughout Langdale, and we'll see more of them to come, right? Um, yeah. Once inside the manor, we see icons of Sarosh and the Banished Knights. From the stores in the manor, we find Banished Knight equipment. It seems that this was likely their fort at some point. There are also more Trees of Jesse, or Yeshua, or however it's said. I really don't remember the alternate pronunciation. It's killing me now. Uh, we also find Saint Statues, so named because of the Saint's Bridge in Limgrave. Right? Uh, we also... Let's see. I uh, can't talk about that. We don't have context for it, unfortunately. We do see depictions of Sarosh over the place. Sarosh seems to be have been recruited by Godfrey. He was probably defeated by Godfrey at one point and then became his regent, I believe, is what we've read. Um... Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it. That's uh, a brief for counting. So it seems that this place is also from a different era. Likely the earliest start. Uh, earlier, actually. And later uh, taken by the Erdtree people. The Erdtree faith. The Erdtree cult. The Golden Order. There we go. Alright, I do want to make up this hill. Oh, I want to get to the boss so bad. We'll see. I'm going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to make the episode long. Though, I, there's no way we're going to do the recap episode by... By episode 100. Oh, there's just no way. I mean, we could recap as is, but there's some talking points that I feel are very, very important. And I would like very much for them to be included.
Oh wow, he's got range on that sucker. There we go. So we have this gladiator man wielding a big ol' axe. And we'll kill his buddy and then read the descriptions on their items. <laughs> the follow-up hurt him. Oh, I should have let him do that grab. Oh, can you do the grab again, buddy? Oh, shucks. I should have let him do the grab. Come on, buddy. Do the grab. Oh, I should have let him do it. I've been meaning to show it off for ages. Ooh. Please. Come on, buddy. Oh, just do the grab. I'll let it happen. Oh, shucks. I feel so stupid. I completely forgot about the grab, and then he did it, but I dodged it. Oh, I dodged him into that one. good practice for dodging him, I guess, but we don't fight these enemies that often, these gladiator dudes with their snakes. Could you grab me? Oh. The grab's really rare, apparently. I could have killed you too. There. No! He missed! He decided to miss! Oh, that's so frustrating. Oh, I just want to get grabbed. Oh, no. I'm going to eat up all my stamina and mana just waiting for him to do the grab again. Oh, that's so sad. Come on, buddy. Just do the grab. I didn't know I needed to back up a little bit when he started doing it. Just a, just a touch. likes to do the grab when we get behind him, I guess. And he's getting a workout for sure. <laughs> oh my heavens. I might speed up this part, honestly. Just do the grab. I wonder if it's because the ground's not flat. He's going to kill me at this rate. You know what would make this funny? Is if I grab this item. Visual shield talisman. I put it on to buff my defenses anytime he happens to accidentally hit me. Because <laughs> it gives you more defenses as long as you're at full HP. Oh man, I'm going to show this off. Well, I guess the episode won't be so long if I speed up this part. I do like how they use the back part of their hammer though. They occasionally use the spike. Which that much weight with a spike in front of it would be kind of mean. In its own right. Oh boy. I'm never going to show off that grab. 
Oh man, it better kill me, honestly. Maybe he's getting tired. I did a randomizer once, and this was our first guy that we had to fight instead of the Grafted Scion. And let me tell you, I think he's a little meaner than the Grafted Scion when you don't have stats. And the Grafted Scion's mean in its own right. Just do the grab. Just do the stupid grab. Oh my gosh, he's done it like two or three times now. And he's the last two times he's missed on his own. Like the grab... Yes! Yes! And the snake... The snake is part of the grab. The snake moves to help bite my face, I believe. Didn't do that much. I didn't try to escape it, but... Yeah, there's the grab. Kind of interesting. At least I thought the snake... I might have to go back in the footage. I think I had a weird frame rate spike during that too, so kind of extra odd. That took way too long. I won't show all of that. There's no way. There's no way. Oh, I'll probably have to show it sped up. I still need to <laughs> show off Bach getting uh, his alternate ending as well. Don't know when I'll record that. But now we can open the Colosseum. And we have found the Ordovis Knight Greatsword. We found it in a dungeon, the uh, Ariza's Hero Grave, right? And it was, uh, we got some equipment there of the Crucible Knights. And it seems that the Ritual Shield Talisman and the Ritual Sword Talisman look like the Ordovis Greatsword and their shield, respectively. Talisman pattern after the shields used in ritual combat. Held to honor the Erd Tree, right? The practice had died out by the age of King Consort Radigan, but remains of the arenas where ritual pro uh, combat took place can still be found in every land. <clears throat> sure enough, and outside this one, we see gladiator-looking dudes. And let's read the description of their weapons and then their armor. So, Duelist Great Axe. Great Axe designed for gladiatorial combat, used by duelists who are exiled from the Colosseum. A weapon reserved for duelist champions. The charge attack is particularly ferocious, and if we look at it... It's got little snakes at the head of it. I said the charge attack is specifically ferocious. ferocious. Ah, uh, it says so. Then we have this hammer. Also has little snakes on it. Right? Kind of funny how the head is offset. I guess that's intentional, but still a little odd. And... Oh, it even has little snakes at the base. Did the other one have little snakes at the base? Uh, no. It kind of had a snake-like pattern wrapping around it, though. And I don't think this one says much of anything different. Large Iron Hammer. Great Hammer. Designed for gladiatorial combat. Used by duelists who are exiled from the Colosseum. Weighty enough to be crush armor like its and its wearer alike. Let's read their armor descriptions. Duelist Helm. Bronze Helm decorated with innumerable snakes. Worn by gladiators who were driven from the Colosseums. The wearer becomes slightly a slightly easier target for foes. The snake is viewed as a traitor to the Erd Tree. And the audience is delighted in seeing these bronze effigies beaten and battered. Sure enough, there's the headpiece. Kind of like theirs. Not all of them have all these snakes. Some of them just have the top snake. Right? And then there's the Gravekeeper Cloak. And the altered version is what they were wearing. See? Snakes. It even looks like they're biting into the flesh of the forearm. The bicep. That one's definitely biting to the shoulder. Look at him. I'm um, taking a bite. So. Defensive wear encircled by bronze snakes. Worn by gladi gladiators who were driven from the Colosseum. The wearer becomes slightly easier target for foes. The snakes are viewed as a traitor of the Erd Tree. Uh, this is a bristly cloak, which, funny enough, has a unique interaction with that one hat. <laughs> it looks so silly. But you can do that. And I don't believe the... I don't think the gladiatorial armor had any gloves. But it did have pants. Duelist Greaves. 
Yep, snakes again. So, there's your silly outfit. Let's go back to wearing the defaulto. If I can remember where I keep it. This episode is a mess, but I appreciate you hanging out with me anyways. <laughs> All right. Uh, Queen America was put in here. It seems that the Colosseum is one of the earlier parts of the Erd Tree era, specifically the Crucible era. It seems to be that interesting bridge between uh, the same tree era that built this manor that was later captured by the Erd Tree people. The that weird Saint Tree culture that has some sort of tie-in with the Beastmen, some Lion people, and Warhawks and the Banished Knights. There's so much going on there. Oh my heavens. Okay. We will go quickly. Oh, I keep saying that. We just have so much to chat about. Such is life. Master. Whatever is the matter. Please, I implore you, continue. Continue your reflections, your rhythms. I must be the one to record them. What matters this issue of Radigan, really? The Erd Tree, heart of the Golden Order, lies before our very eyes. Why must these qualms come to you now? We were on the very cusp. All right, Starfist, spherical iron manifer covered in spikes, which induce blood loss. It's a punch weapon. It's pretty good. Used in brutal games of pugilism, I suppose. And here we've Brother Corin. Oh, was that you? Sorry, I hardly noticed. I'm a little shaken since the master ceased his movements. He's doing half a T-pose. I'd be a little suspicious, too. So he hasn't learned anything new. The master's reflections had heightened as we neared the Erd Tree. While still a precise calculus, the rhythms grew increasingly wild until he simply ceased. Now the master is facing quite the puzzle. The Golden Order is founded on the principle that Marika is the one true god. However, the name of Marika's second husband, King Consort Radigan, also appeared. Who exactly was Radigan? The master is stumped. His finger has remained still ever since Radigan's name was discovered. Curse my mediocre mind. The master only has me. And here I fail him. Well, it's been a while, but when we talked to Muriel way back when, he mentioned that there was a uh, statue rendered in Radigan's likeness that contained a secret in Radigan's closet. And, well, here we are in Lanedale, and now Radigan is popping up again in the lore. So we need to find a statue of Radigan, and we haven't found one yet. So we need to keep looking. We can also give him a prayer book, but we won't. Who exactly the master is? His finger has remained still. But the Erd Tree, heart of the Golden Order, lies before our very eyes. Why must these qualms come to you now? We were on the very... So he's still upset with the gold mask. And it was so very quiet. But he actually groans there. Instead of saying nothing, he actually is a groan. A thoughtful groan. Oh dear, that's quiet even for me. Alright, well, let's get to it. Um, I think we can do the little bit of their quest here. And we'll make it a part of this episode just because I feel like going crazy. I don't want to cut it off right there. We're so very close. Is too heavy. <laughs> that is way too heavy. I figured it would be. I just wanted to look. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Let's go up these roots here. So, as we work our way up the roots, we see that there are tree guardians again, and they have more. Well, a lot of them have trees growing out of them, where that was not... I don't think it was a requirement for others before. These ones even have blossoms coming out of them. And they're strangely passive, for some reason. Well, we can go around this loop over here. 
Oh, there he goes, the body. Oh, come on, let me up. <laughs> How embarrassing. Bunch of flowers all over the place. I don't think they're guarding really anything of value. There is this item on the other side of the bridge across where we fought the lion guardian, which is really our only other leak to lion type creatures in the world of Elden Ring, besides Sarosh. Was Sarosh a lion guardian like those that we fought? Those lion guardians also have weird horns sprouting out of them like omens, so are they afflicted by the crucible? Like the misbegotten? Very odd. Very peculiar. Oh, boy. Okay. I think I'm gonna use this again, though. Oh, now you're all awake. Oh, this is probably a mistake for time. He healed himself. I never seen him do that before. I think if I cast the Nightmaid Mist behind me, it'll dissipate the cloud in front of me sooner. There we go. Classic move. Being hoisted upon my own petard. Oh, we got a sword spear. And sent his potty off the cliff. I used way too many supplies <laughs> fighting that uh, gladiator. So now I'm a little worried. I don't think I'll need all of them. We'll find out. But we can use this tree to get back up. And it seems to be our cheat code to get onto this balcony. This root may not have been here when this was constructed. Which means the herb tree has only continued to grow, or the great tree. Uh, if we look off this little side area, though, that we can't get to it just yet. Yeah, it's hard to see, but it's another gazebo with a basin. One of them blessing basins. And sure enough, we're pretty close to the herb tree. I mean, there's this chasm, sure, but... We've never been closer. And I'm going to use one of these, finally. I don't want to, but I think I'm going to need it, because that mana is going to come in handy. Who do I bring with me? If I could bring the one that doesn't use mana. That's probably a good call, <laughs> personally. Godfrey, first Elden Lord. Oh, shucks. I had to bring somebody I knew I could trust. Myself. Oh god, I got stomped by it because I angled my roll so poorly. But we see a big ol' axe. Oh, I wish we could print screen to take a look at Godfrey's axe, though. Ugh. Oh. But we did get to see a shade of Godfrey in his glory, but he was hounded from the lands between. That wasn't the real thing. A golden illusion. Where have we seen golden illusions before? Well, more got the grace given. Has covered up areas before with his uh, golden fantastical lights. Um, Margit the Fell has conjured golden illusions. I'm trying to think of who else. Not very much in terms of Golden Illusion. Seems like a, a weird thing. But we don't know the tie-in between Margit and Morgoth, despite the similarity in their names. I'm going to level up once. 
Mm, yes. And there'll be a reason for that, you'll see. But uh, we come here. And there's this, these roots. There's more of these uh, basins. These baptismal looking basins. Um, I guess there's a few things I could talk about. How were blessings harvested from the Erd Tree? Well, we can see large gashes in the Erd Tree. Maybe not here. But it looks like there's scores along even the visage of the Erd Tree higher up. Oh, I am not seeing them from here. <laughs> we are too close to the Erd Tree, right? But we've seen them before, right? There's large gashes in the trunk. Um, like ashes used to harvest sap or mastic gum from trees, right? Mastic trees reside on the Isle of Chios, which is near Greece. And they are scored and the sap drips from those gashes. It is allowed to harden and fall. The sap is referred to as tears. We've seen crystal tears time and time again as a uh, item we can get in-game. These tears are collected and cleaned by the women wearing traditional headscarves like we see on the front of the icon shield here, right? And while the exact recipe for uh, chrism isn't known, right, the chrism used by Eastern Orthodox clergy, some ingredients are, and one of those regions are actually the sacred tears of Chios, or Chios. So kind of a neat little uh, tie-in there. We also see dead finger readers, so something horrible happened here. Maybe she was left alone too long. But sure enough, we see a basin here. And I don't think there was an item at the other one, but they're all over the place. We have this route that we can conveniently go up. Head over here. More tree sentinels. Beautiful iconography. The building looks very nice. Uh, we are here at the Earth Tree Sanctuary, right? Um, Godfrey, First Elden Lord, we fight him here. He's the uh, Golden Shade. We get a Talisman Pouch, right, as well. So we finally have all of our slots. Oh my goodness, what am I going to do with this pre precious information? Um, I need to reorganize this inventory, honestly. It's looking kind of kind of shabby, but I digress. Coming up here, we see many more Finger Readers. And a huge... Erd tree relief on that structure over there. We will go over there, but we're going to do some rooftop hopping as if it's Dark Souls 1 all over again. Look an open window. We can't help ourselves. Breaking and entering. It's what we do here. These wide Erd tree reliefs are also a sign to me that the narrow Erd tree reliefs are depicting a different thing. So here we have the Erd tree bow. It's not the Erd tree great bow like you can get at the very beginning of the game. It's a regular sized bow. Long bow featuring Erd tree styling in times of old. When faith and battle went hand in hand, this weapon was created in tandem with the golden arrow. Scales all arrow damage with faith, revealing its true worth when in, when used with holy infused arrows. A celestial dew for forgiveness. And a ladder, so we don't have to run all along the outside of the building again. But I don't think we'll ever need it. Over here we have this weird crib with a figure in it. The figure is wearing a cloth on his head, it looks like. Honestly, it looks like the wax worn on the heads of the scholars in uh, the Grand Archive of Dark Souls 3. The Grand Archive, uh, yeah. It looks like one of those wax head fellows to me. Now, it just seems like a cloth. I don't think that's wax on his head, personally. And we can take this from him. It's the Golden Order Principa, another holy book. We found two recently. How lucky are we? Golden Order Principa. Prayer Book of the Golden Order Fundamentalists. And sure enough, there's the Golden Order sigil on there. No Erd Tree in sight, just a triangle in the Elden Ring. A dense and complex academic treatise that contains the Order's fundamental principles can be given to a learned cleric to gain access to the following incantations. Which we do need to do. Man, we are going on tangents today. So let's go to Muriel, because he is our fellow for books. He is who we go to. Let's try to remember where we get the plus one version of Erdtree's favor. I genuinely don't remember. There's a plus one and a plus two variant, I recall. Now, I should probably level up my stats so I don't need to wear it anymore, and that would free up a slot, and that'd be nice. Greetings. Do you need anything? Sure. Um, 
about Radigan. You know, it's said that Lord Radigan harbored a secret. A famed sculptor of the Earth Tree capital was once summoned to render Lord Radigan's likeness in giant stature when he glimpsed the skeleton in Radigan's closet. And as such, it's said the great statue harbors his secret too. Sure enough. So we can give him prayer books. Give him oh, the two fingers prayer book. Very well. Let heresy all thing. And we can give him the oh, Golden Order Principa. We Very well. Heresy is not all thing. And we can study incantations, and now we have access to these four. So, Lord's Heal and Lord's Aid were both on the uh, Two Fingers pr uh, book that we had. Grab both of those. Lord's Heal, incantation bestowed by the Two Fingers upon Tarnish deemed worthy of becoming a Lord. Heals a massive amount of HP for the caster and nearby allies. Hold to continue praying and delay activation. Tarnished, O Tarnished, seek the Erd Tree and stand before America, its Queen, become the Elden Lord. And then Lord's Aid, incantation bestowed by the Two Fingers upon the Tarnished deemed worthy of becoming a Lord. Alleviates buildup of poison, blood loss, and sleep for the caster and nearby allies. Additionally, cures poison. Hold to continue praying to delay activation. Let's see. Radigan's Ring of Light, one of the incantations of the Golden Order Fundamentalists, a gift of gratitude to the young Mikola from his father, Radigan. And we saw earlier that the little disc of light you can throw out as an incantation was Mikola's gift to his father, and this was his gift in return. Produces a golden ring of light that f fires it across a wide area, charging enhances range, and yet the young Mikola abandoned fundamentalism for it could not it, for it could do nothing to treat Melania's accursed rot. This was the beginning of unalloyed gold, which is interesting because unalloyed gold is used in the form of a needle to spare Millicent the horrible effects of the rot. Incantation of Golden Order Fundamentalists, one of the key fundamentals, heals all negative statuses, dispels special effects, and reveals mimicry in all its forms. The Fundamentalists describe the Golden Order through the powers of regression and causality. Regression is the pull of meaning that all things yearn eternally to converge. Okay. So thank you, Mr. Turtle. I think I need substantially more faith to wield that incantation that we just got. But don't worry. We have a means around that. So we are going to mix our wondrous physic. We're going to boost uh, faith instead. And we're going to memorize spell and we're going to replace starlight with our new... Law of Regression, which takes 37... Oh, I didn't need to level up int. I thought it took 47 int for some reason, not 37. Oh, well. Leveled up for no reason. Okay. And now we are going to head to the Erdtree Sanctuary and go out that side door. Oh, wow. This episode's turned out to be way too long. It's important, I promise. <laughs> Uh, maybe I will chop this in half and do a little intro and say, hey, this is episode uh, 98. Uh, I might do that. <laughs> maybe. Perhaps. But we go through here. Very nice ornamentation and a little elevator. And here we have a little upper area. This is where we could normally jump down to get the Bolt of Grand Sacks, had we not cheated to it earlier. And here we finally have a statue of Radigan. And it says, Regression alone reveals secrets. And conveniently enough, we just learned Law of Regression in the Erd Tree Sanctuary from the prayer book there. So I believe what we can do is we can equip this bad boy, which is not the easiest seal to use, but... Anyway, I'll drink my flask of wondrous physics so we get the stats to wield it. And you can stack all sorts of items to cast this spell. You should be able to cast it on any character just stacking enough int boosting items. Especially if you've been collecting things throughout the game. And we use it, and it turns Radigan's statue into a Queen Merica statue. And the developer message moved forward on the ground, and it says Radigan is Merica. Very curious. Stabbed him in the back. Interesting that this perfumer was praying in front of the Crucible Prophet statue. Or at least, uh, paying it homage. Oh! 
The, the phalanx killed the beetle as soon as we got close to it, which it's normally supposed to move and hide about. That's actually a really good way to grab it. I've never tried that before. Huh. New tech unlocked. Barrier of gold. You don't have much time, because there's a guy behind us, but we're going to read it anyways. Barrier of gold. One of the incantations of Erdtree Worship greatly increases magic damage negation for the caster nearby allies. Hold to continue praying delay activation. This incantation was used by the champions of the Erdtree in the First and Second Lyrnian Wars, during which the red-haired Radigan joined the hero's ranks. And another funny thing about that is that Barrier of Gold buffs your magic negation by, like, a tasty 60%, making it absolutely phenomenal for dealing with those fellows. Oh, wow. Oh, shucks. <laughs> they usually don't flub this bad. Buddy, I need a moment to breathe. God, oh, you can't heal even while after knocking him down from a parry, it feels like. And to disgrace him, throwing a knife to the chest. There we go. Yet another crucible knight. There's like 12 of them throughout the game, so they seem kind of important. There's not too many of them, but they're pretty prominent. And I don't think there's anything worth getting over here. This is just another place where the beetle runs to. Okay, so now... 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 I think we're going to go to the first floor of the Fortified Manor and make our way over to Gold Mask. Yeah, I think I should probably cut this episode in half. I've been bad. <laughs> it's going to be funny for you because you'll be like, you already did the intro and you're like, ah, I'm right. You're right, you're right. But that's just how the cookie crumbles. Or I'm going to find out I didn't actually cut it in this episode. It's just going to be really long. Honestly, that's what happened with the Stormvale episode. I'm not too upset if this is what happens with this episode. Maybe I'll make the future parts just long ones, just so I can get to episode 100 for the recap. Oh, that'd be so bad. Oh, that would be so bad. <laughs> Funny, but bad. <clears throat> Alright, let's talk to Goldmask before my voice leaves me. Holy crap. Taking a drink. Mmm, delicious water. My throat feels lots better now. Thank you, water. Smithing Stone 5 that I missed before. Let's talk to Goldmask. He's obviously the manager here. I love how we look up at him. Tell him that Radigan is Merica. He does a little gasp. <gasps> and we get the T-Pose. Golden Order Totality. What on earth did you do to the Master? Well, not that I'm complaining. Master's finger moves again, resuming his cogitation. More than good enough for me. I haven't the words to thank you. So I'd like to pass this on to you instead. A glimpse into the heart of the Golden Order. Documented by yours truly. And sure enough, he's learned Immutable Shield, which is a Golden Order Fundamentalist incantation. This one enchants the shield held in the left hand with the uh, Light of Regression, increasing all forms of non-physical damage negation and ailment resistance. It doesn't boost guard boost. It's specifically uh, resisting statuses and elemental damage. Two concepts form the basis of Golden Order Fundamentalism. One is the Law of Regression, which is this incantation, to which this incantation relates. Incantation 
uh, sorry, uh, regression and causality. No, what is it? Regression and... There's two concepts. One of them is regression. I'm trying to remember what the other one is. I think it is regression and causality. But I could be wrong. We'll find another incantation that uh, talks about it in time. Okay. So to round off this episode, we're going to head to the Yurtree Sanctuary. We're going to run up that route really fast. And we're going to get right before a subsequent boss, but we're not going to deal with him. We're going to go do many other side things instead. But we are going to run there real fast just to show off what's up. As much as I would love to tackle this boss, we still have a little bit to chat about here. Uh, let's see, we've talked about the Erdtree Sanctuary a little bit. We got the Erdtree Pouch, Bow, Golden Order Principa, Celestial Dew. Um, let's see, the tapestries around the Lanedale Rampart Side of Grace, we've looked at them. They aren't normal Erdtree symbols, but there's little figures in the branches, right? And near the top of the structure, is that supposed to be this building? They look a little similar, just a smidge. We'll get closer and I'll explain my reasoning in a moment. Kidding me? Oh, shucks. Oh, oh, that's unsightly. Oh, that was never supposed to happen. That, that, that did not look safe for work. Oh, yeah, oh. So we walk in here, and there are tablets everywhere. Tablets with writing on them. And a huge domed structure with drapes and a bed. A stone bed doesn't sound too comfortable unless it is a particularly thick blanket. It gives you lots of support, though, I guess. Blessing of the Erd Tree. Let's take a look at that really fast. One of the ancient Erd Tree incantations. And sure enough, when we look at the picture, it's got the ancient Erd Tree on it. The Crucible Era Erd Tree. One of the earliest forms of the Erd Tree. Grants a greater blessing to the caster nearby allies, gradually restoring a large amount of HP. Hold to continue praying to delay activation. The Erd Tree once flourished with abundance, yet it was only for a fleeting moment. Such is the course of all life. Seems that Queen Merica wanted to uh, keep that era going. It's a very nice building. Or tree reliefs of a different variety that we haven't seen before. But when we sit down at the side of Grace, sure enough, we see it's the Queen's bedchamber. So, uh, let's see. So we've examined the... Da -da -da -da. Yeah, so we've looked at the... Uh, tree of jesse symbol in the game before the one that's got the earth tree and people coming out of the boughs and there's a structure at the top could that be america's bedchamber or perhaps the earth tree sanctuary one of these two structures kind of being the figurehead of that civilization and golden lineage right hard to say um we've already discovered the skeleton in radigan's closet we got the barrier of gold Queen Bear America's bedchamber. Uh, we got the blessing of the Earth Tree. America's bedchamber seems to be a modeled after the Pantheon of Rome, which was made in like 125 CE. Most notably, the dome for the roof. Uh, when Melina says she was born at the foot of the Earth Tree, she could be uh, joining the Earth Tree faithful via baptism, right? From those. Uh, Yeah, over there, the uh, little brass blessing bulls that we've seen around the place. So it makes me wonder if that's what she was talking about, right, to finish off that thought. Um, via baptism from the chrism of the copper basins, using the sacred tears collected from Queen Merica's perhaps even own bed. Maybe they were somehow collected here. It looks like a basin of collection, or at least half of one. Like we've seen all over the place, but huge. Um. Yeah. I think we'll go up here briefly so there is a fog wall there is a depiction of the uh i need to change the time of day nighttime's not helping us here it is not helping us here pass the time until noon apparently it was extremely early morning previously that's better okay Yeah, see? There's the golden outside. 
the inside. And interestingly enough, we see a huge symbol on the front of the Erd tree, right? And it looks like it's got the Elden Ring, right? And the huge series of roots. Then it has a tree. And it has more tree. It even has a little ball-shaped thing in the middle there. So this is obviously deeply symbolic. It's going to be a little bit before we piece all this together. But this seems to be very important. Obviously, it's the foot of the earth tree. There's a boss arena up there. <laughs> and we won't do the boss now, unfortunately. We're going to have to wait. There's things we need to do first. I'm just glad that the Golden Shade gave us that talisman pouch. That'll be nice. But at the very top, there is a summon sign for Melina. And she has a dagger. A nicely curved dagger. We haven't seen its like before. But she's here and ready and willing to help. She's willing to fight whatever's in there with us. But uh, that'll be an episode next time. So I think I will keep the episodes linked. I think I've decided. So tune in next time for episode 98. Thank you for joining me. And I hope you have a good time with this. Gall, it's such a mess. But uh, we'll strap it all together. Maybe I'll go absolutely nuts. And we'll get everything ready for episode 100 and do a recap episode then. Well, thank you for joining me. I hope you have a good one. And bye bye hey!